Ed. Up over, on the other over, side of Secretary Augustus. It's so nice to be here and to see so many friendly faces. We're here again at St. Mary's, one of the landmark uh, housing projects here in the city of Pittsfield and on Tyler Street. Um, and I am honored to welcome uh, Governor Healy here to the city of Pittsfield. It's such a pleasure to host you here in our city. And thank you for your leadership in creating more opportunities for families and seniors and businesses all across this commonwealth through your recent celebrated tax relief package. As Pittsfield's mayor, I am, and, and as the president of the Massachusetts Mayor's Association, I'm especially grateful for the 4.1 billion housing bond bill that will significantly, yes, let's applaud. This bond bill is going to significantly increase investments in public and affordable housing. And I am especially excited about the expansion of the Housing Development Incentive Program. As you can see here at St. Mary's and on the tour that we just did, Governor, uh, gateway cities like Pittsfield rely on these state programs to support housing development across the spectrum. And I'm really super proud that Pittsfield was the first community in Massachusetts to have an approved HDIP zone. Thank you. Since that designation, we have created 144 units of market rate housing. And when I first took office in 2016, saving St. Mary's was a top priority. For those of you who might remember the history, St. Mary's was on the verge of becoming a Dunkin' Donuts. But I could not stand by, and neither could the neighbors, and neither could other community members stand by and let this beautiful historic property be demolished. I knew that there was so much more potential here, but I needed an experienced developer, a partner, someone who shared a passion for neighborhoods, for history, and for architecture. I knew just who to call. So one day while I was in Boston, walking through the common, thinking about this dilemma. I sat down on a bench and I called. I made a call. And thank goodness, David Carver answered the phone. I was a, I was a brand new mayor. I'd been in office for maybe six months. And, you know, I wasn't sure he'd take my call, but he did. And that was the beginning of an incredible partnership. Look what he did. David is, a de is the developer who has transformed this former church. He has transformed the former fire station and other properties into new and updated living units. He must be credited for this wonderful transformation that we see here today. And HDIP, Governor, is vital component of the financing that makes these projects possible. So along with Morningstar, HDIP has allowed Pittsfield to convert vacant commercial spaces on the upper floors in our downtown buildings into stunning new rental apartments. And none of these spaces would be possible without the Housing Development Incentive Program. All of these projects have brought new residents into our downtown, from young professionals to active seniors, right into the urban center of our city. And it has stimulated economic growth. With Governor Healy's recent increase in the HDIP program cap from $10 million to $57 million, more housing development will, like this, will receive funding. Pittsfield has several projects in the queue, and we look forward to welcoming more housing units in our community across a variety of needs. Right, Brad? Right. So really, Pittsfield is fortunate to have so many reliable community partners and private developers who have stepped up to help provide more housing opportunities. And many of you are here today, and we thank you. It's my privilege and honor to have worked with you over these last seven and a half years. And as we uh, 
begin to step away from office, I know that the strength of this network will carry on. I now have the great honor to introduce a champion not only for Western Massachusetts, but a champion for all cities across this Commonwealth, our favorite point guard, Governor Moore Healy. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Mayor Tyre. And, uh, you know, you've been a, an awesome partner uh, to me personally in my capacity as Attorney General and certainly as Governor now. And I want to thank you for all you've done here in Pittsfield and for the very warm welcome here today for all of us. And I bring greetings from Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, who was here not too long ago. Uh, we are delighted to be here. I'm so proud to stand alongside our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. It's wonderful to be here uh, with so many advocates, so many people who have been so supportive of doing the important work that we need to do. Great to meet Dave. We just came from an awesome tour of this church, and it is really uh, such a credit to Dave and the team and those who advocated to save St. Mary's. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Dunkin' Donuts. We love Dunkin' Donuts. And there are places for Dunkin' Donuts, and then there are places that make a lot of sense to build beautiful housing. And this this is that kind of place. So I really appreciate it. Um, you know, anyone who thinks for a minute that historic preservation and housing access, housing production are opposing forces just needs to come here and see what's possible. And it's awesome. Um, I do want to talk about a couple things that we're here to, to, to talk about today. Um, as you know, housing costs are maybe our greatest challenge in the state. It's an issue no matter where I go, certainly here in northern Berkshire County, but honestly, across the entire state, it's housing. And whether you're looking at uh, a, you know, the, the vacancy rates, which right now I think are among the lowest in the country, or home sales here in Massachusetts, which are at a 13-year low, um, the vital signs are not very good for where we are in terms of housing here in the state. And population has outpaced um, what's available in terms of, of, of housing. You know, you talk to parents, um, so, many, so many young people are living at home still with their parents. Um, young families are having trouble saving up for down payments for their first home. S people who've gone through some of our colleges and universities and you know, can't afford to stay here in Massachusetts, which is what I want everyone to do. Uh, seniors are facing rent increases that they just can't meet. And, you know, other folks are making decisions about leaving our great state simply because they can't afford housing. And we're better than that. And that's why I'm so committed to what we announced today, which was a $4 billion housing bond bill. Um, <laughs> to deal with some of this because people are stressed, they're feeling the stress and the pressure of high cost housing around the state. It's a barrier to opportunity, to equity, also to public health, particularly for low income communities. And the housing crunch and crisis threatens the very competitiveness and economic development of our state. So we needed to act. And that's why since day one of our administration, we made housing a top priority. We created for the first time a Secretariat of Housing and Livable Communities, and we put Ed Augustus in place to drive housing production around the state. It's why a few weeks ago when I signed what was the first major tax cut in Massachusetts in over 20 years, there were tax cuts for everyone and incentives for everyone including, I want people to know, parents and caregivers. Massachusetts now has the most generous child and family dependent tax credit in the United States. That's really, really important. We also did tax cuts around housing. Uh, let's start with the senior circuit breaker tax credit. That means that seniors are now going to double their credit from $1,200 to $2,400 every year. That's real money that they're going to get back, whether they pay rent or whether they pay a mortgage. You know, 
in addition, we doubled the renter's deduction, increasing it from $3,000 to $4,000. Again, it's about putting money back in people's pocket. Importantly, we also expanded tax credits. These are tax credits that actually drive housing development in the state. And nobody can spell it out more clearly than Dave Carver what this actually means. And when Mayor Tyre talked about the HDIP program, this is the HDIP program in action. We recently increased that cap from $10 million to nearly $60 million um, because it is that important. It is that kind of tax credit that helps and is the only thing that makes possible, as I understand it from Dave, developments like this. So I'm really proud that we got that done. We also expanded the low income housing tax credit from $40 million a year to $60 million a year. This is real money and this is, you know, big, big steps forward. Today, though, we went even further. And, you know, I have, if you know nothing about me um, and uh, Kim, we're about trying to get after it and get things done. She's also a former basketball player. And so we have a very uh, competitive drive in all of us. And we are blessed with the best team, the people that come to work in our administration. And I'm grateful, including to Kristen Aleko, who oversees all things Western Mass for us. Now, you know, our view was this is such a big problem that we've got to go big. We have got to go big or else we're just nibbling around the edges. And we're going to have too many people struggling financially, too many people leaving, um, too many businesses looking to locate or relocate outside of the state. It's not what we want. It's not who we are. And so that's why this morning I filed the Affordable Homes Act. It's a $4 billion plan to create tens of thousands of new homes, 40,000 new housing starts, the preservation, renovation of an additional 30,000 affordable homes. The goal with this legislation is to make housing more affordable, more available for everyone across the state. It's also going to help us meet our climate goals and empower communities to meet their residents' needs. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about it. Although, you know, Secretary Augustus, I want you to talk about it because you worked so hard on this. 120 stakeholder meetings, including with some represented up here and out here that helped drive and inform what ultimately became this important piece of legislation. And I'm grateful. But let me just say it's a, it's a big bill um, that includes tremendous capital authorizations for 18 different housing programs. Some of these are existing programs. Some of these are new, innovative programs because the times require it. In addition, we are going to be repairing and modernizing 43,000 public housing units because the state of public housing units in this Commonwealth is just not right. We've got to fix that. It's a comprehensive plan. It's a plan designed to work with communities, to help communities. Um, some of the tax credits include the homeowner production tax credit, which is going to create new homeownership opportunities, a community investment tax credit that's going to incentivize donations to CDCs and other nonprofits to produce affordable housing. And we've got important um, policies put in place, including establishing a statewide housing plan, establishing an office of fair housing, uh, and many, many other uh, policies that are really meant to get rid of the barriers so we're streamlining production and the building of affordable housing around the state. Uh, a few other things, the local option on transfer fees to fund affordable housing, inclusionary zoning by a simple majority, uh, as of right status for accessory dwelling units statewide, super, super important stuff. I also signed three executive orders. One is focused on creating a housing advisory council because this is work we've got to do with intentionality every day and a commission to unlock housing production. And finally, a third executive order that focuses on identifying every last bit of surplus public land that we can use for housing in the state. This to me is, um, is bold and it needs to be bold because we, uh, we desperately need it. The residents of Massachusetts deserve it. To make it a reality, we are going to have to all work together in the coming weeks and months in advocacy. We want to get this done. We want to get it implemented. 
Also, I'm noting that with every construction start or every, every work on, on a housing development, it's a, it's a huge workforce opportunity. And that also means an economic driver because you think about lumber yards being busy coffee shops and cafes being busy all from you know part of the part of the web of housing production so it's such a win-win for our state but we've got to work together to make this happen the time is now I know we can meet this moment and I can't wait to see the exciting housing development that's going to occur that's going to make such a difference in the lives of people of this state in Pittsfield and across the region and also what it's going to mean for economic development for the Commonwealth. So thank you so much. And now I'm going to turn it over to Secretary Augustus, uh, who has worked incredibly hard with his team to both develop what became the tax cuts, um, what, were, what were the investments in the budget that was recently passed and that I signed, and finally what showed up in the housing bond bill that we filed today. Secretary Augustus. Well, thank you, Governor and Mayor Tyre. Thank you for uh, allowing us to be here with you today in the beautiful city of Pittsfield. And I especially want to thank the folks who are here today, many of whom are housing stakeholders who have long been advocating for housing solutions. There's a lot to celebrate with you here today. The Governor and Lieutenant Governor have provided bold leadership, both on the recent tax relief package and for the vision for solving the housing affordability challenges by filing the Affordable Homes Act this morning. This is an audacious move to address one of our greatest challenges as a Commonwealth. As I mentioned this morning, today is the 140th day since the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities was created. In that short time, we've worked to enact powerful changes to counter the forces of rising housing costs that have increasingly left many feeling priced out of Massachusetts. While there's still plenty of work to do, the two recent initiatives the governor spoke about will have huge impact in creating more housing opportunities for our entire Commonwealth. We know the challenges you face here in many ways are similar to the rest of the state, but you have some unique struggles also. Despite the relatively lower cost of rents and cost of uh, purchasing homes here, the cost to build here is exactly the same as everywhere else. And that makes the challenge even more daunting. As a former city manager of a gateway city, I understand how important housing growth is. In Worcester, we needed both market rate housing and affordable housing to revitalize neighborhoods and provide people with safe, attractive, and affordable places to live. The increase in the funding for the HDIP program, including, included in the $1 billion tax relief package, will do this for gateway cities like Pittsfield. Adding more housing not only keeps prices under control, it helps drive the local economy and puts more people in our downtown, in neighborhoods, and where they can support small businesses and dining. HDIP provides two tax incentives one provided by the local government and one by the state through the tax credits to developers to undertake new construction or substantial rehabilitation of properties for lease or sale as multi-unit market rate residential housing. Over the past decade, six developments in Pittsfield have received funding from HDIP, including this beautiful example uh, here at St. Mary's. What we saw today is testament to the types of creative housing solutions that are made possible with this program. Additionally, this tax bill included $20 million annual increase, $260 million, historic levels, as the governor mentioned, of the state, state low-income uh, housing tax credit. State LIHTC is the most important state tool available for development of affordable housing. Paired with federal LIHTC, and other capital sources, many of which are more robustly funded with the new housing bond bill that was filed today. These increases in investment will create thousands of more affordable housing units across the state and right here in the Berkshires. But today I'm very excited to talk about the Affordable Homes Act. 
The act represents the most significant housing legislation since 40B was implemented 50 years ago. The $4.12 billion in investment in Affordable Homes Act includes big structural changes in housing policy. This process was not done in a vacuum. In the 120, 140 days since the Secretariat was created, we sat down with 120 stakeholders, talked with developers, housing advocates, local leaders like you, those who know the issues best. These investments are spread across numerous programs that are aimed at driving construction of more housing across every level. More housing for low-income families, more housing that is affordable for our workforce who drive our economy, and more housing for middle-income families. $1.6 billion investment in our public housing represents a significant commitment to those on limited incomes because our public housing residents deserve to live in safe, resilient, and energy-efficient communities they can be proud of. The $1.83 billion to drive affordability in mixed-income housing production and preservation that this bill authorizes will infuse more affordable and middle-income housing into our economy. And it's important that while we build more, we also build it right. The $275 million for sustainable and green housing initiatives will ensure we're working toward our environmental goals while creating more housing. But spending alone won't solve the challenges we face. There are 28 policy changes laid out in the Affordable Homes Act. They'll give communities the tools they need to create more housing where they need it. Importantly, the Affordable Homes Act allows homeowners in every community with the option to build an in-law apartment or an accessory dwelling unit on their property. It allows cities and towns to levy a modest transfer fee on high-value properties, property transactions, that the proceeds of which would be dedicated to affordable housing development and preservation in their communities. So this is a new tool that's left in the capable hands of local leaders to make decisions that make sense for their communities and their neighborhoods. And this act and an accompanying ex executive order that the governor signed earlier today will kick off an effort to make the most of state-owned land by directing every agency, not only those covered by DCAM, but all of the quasis, all of the other state agencies, there are many that have capital assets to, to identify those that can be surplus for purposes of affordable housing construction. And as that process moves forward, if this legislation is passed, the governor will have much streamlined authority to quickly surplus that property, put it in the hands of developers and local communities to get building that housing that we so desperately need. Together, the tax bill and the Affordable Homes Act are expected to create more than 40,000 new homes and preserve an additional 27,000 homes. They will result in billions in economic activity across the state and create tens of thousands of job opportunities. While the tax bill and Affordable Homes Act won't allevi alleviate overnight the challenges Massachusetts residents have been facing, these pieces of legislation are pivotal steps towards overcoming our housing crisis and creating a thriving state from Berkshire County to Barnstable County. It's an honor to be here and it's an honor to work uh, for a governor who's so clear and so passionate and so ready to act on the crisis that's facing us in housing and today is a big step forward. It's now my honor to introduce Justine Dodds, the Community Director for the City of Pittsfield. I am so pleased to be standing here to speak to you about my community and in a space that means a lot to me personally. I grew up two blocks from St. Mary's and I still live in this neighborhood. My brother, my sister and I had our first communion here and were confirmed here and walked to church here. It was an important part of my neighborhood and my community. I have been privileged to work with our local and state partners to create the community we see before us today, a project that has retained the sense of grandeur and beauty that these buildings have and have preserved for our residents to come. Housing is what builds community. It brings people together 
in shared spaces and creates community. The city has a strong commitment to building this community through preserving and expanding housing options for all of our residents. The mayor has spoken about how the city has utilized the HDIP program to repurpose historic and commercial buildings and to bring new residents to our city and into our neighborhoods. HDIP has benefited our local businesses and our cultural institutions with residents that live nearby to take advantage of their offerings. It has helped our local employers attract a diverse workforce that can live in the community that they work in. And it has revitalized neighborhoods all while preserving history. I know everyone here is not aware that this work is not without challenges. As mentioned, the increase in construction costs has affected the ability to produce housing. Costs here in Pittsfield are on par with the eastern end of the state. However, our local rents are much lower. Limited inventory, rents that have skyrocketed over the past few years and that have not kept pace with the increased costs have pushed many of our residents into housing instability. Here in Pittsfield, 43% of our housing stock was built prior to 1939. 83% was built prior to 1978, in contrast to the state average of 71%. This makes the preservation of the housing we have one of our most important strategies for creating more affordable housing opportunities. And it has been a focus of the Community Development Department for the last 30 years. We have run a community development block granted rehab program since 1992. And in that time, we have rehabbed over 700 units of existing housing, providing code related improvements, lead paint abatement, or emergency uh, work like replacing heating systems or aging windows. I have seen firsthand how this program has preserved the housing in our community and in residential neighborhoods and kept residents safe and secure in their own homes. In light of the success of this program, the city, under the stewardship of Mayor Tyer, invested $1 million of local funding in the At Home in Pittsfield program, which provides funds for homeowners who are in need of exterior repairs. This program has been hugely successful and has improved the quality of life for the residents and neighborhoods, kept our local workforce employed, and built wealth by increasing the homeowners' equity in their homes. Housing and the supportive services need, needed to help people retain stable housing is also a critical part of building a diverse community. Our faith-based community has recognized this need and has stepped forward to be part of the solution. Along with our partner agencies, such as Berkshire Housing, ServiceNet, Berkshire Regional Housing Authority, First United Methodist Church has opened their doors to house a new 45-bed emergency shelter here in Pittsfield. The Zion Lutheran community has also opened its doors to welcome a truly unique and first-of-its-kind housing resource center. Funded with local ARPA funds, this project illustrates the deep commitment Pittsfield has to enhance the quality of life for all of our residents, including the most vulnerable and in need. LIHTC and the creation of affordable rental housing has been also extremely important in providing housing opportunities for Pittsfield residents. Pittsfield has a long history of utilizing this program with 690 units that have been developed with LIHTC funds. These projects include the Soak Mill, just two blocks to the south of St. Mary's, Berkshire Peak on West Street, and the supportive housing units above the YMCA. LIHTC funds are also an integral piece of the redevelopment of the White Terrace property. This property has been a source of blight on the upper end of our downtown and has suffered from neglect, vandalism, and fire damage. We have continually feared that these historic structures would not survive long enough to fill the critical need for new affordable housing. Thanks to the LIHTC program and combined with local community development block grant and ARPA funds, this property will be under construction in the upcoming year and will provide 41 units of much needed affordable housing. This project, along with the 28 permanent supportive housing units funded with LIHTC and starting construction soon, will have a significant impact on our housing landscape. 
I thank Governor Healy and Secretary Augustus for their recognition of just how vital these programs are to communities like Pittsfield to address the housing affordability gap and make housing accessible to a wider range of individuals and families. I'm going to now um, turn it over to Jonathan Butler, who is the President and CEO of One Berkshire. Thank, thank you, Justine. Uh, so the, the Affordable Homes Act was released just this morning. So today it was a quick study during lunch to get filled in <laughs> on the details, uh, though exciting to review, to be able to react a little bit here. But really it's a privilege to be here with, uh, with the governor, the secretary, the mayor, um, and so many housing practitioners that all contributed to uh, our, the, the ability for these announcements to be made today. Um, so thank you all. So welcome to the Berkshires, Governor Healy and Secretary Augustus. On behalf of our 800 plus member businesses in the Berkshires, I want to commend the Healy Driscoll administration for your leadership to address the housing crisis in Massachusetts through both the $1 billion tax cut package and the just released Affordable Homes Act bond bill. From the perspective of both the business community and also speaking as the regional economic development organization for the Berkshires, we can confidently say that the housing crisis is our number one current economic challenge. Homelessness and housing insecurity continues to jeopardize people's ability to enter the workforce and take back control of their lives. A shortage of desirable, affordable housing continues to plague all subregions of the Berkshires, from North Adams to Pittsfield to Great Barrington. And with the average sale price of a home in the Berkshires having increased by nearly 80% over the past three years, we are now also faced with a significant shortage of market rate housing inventory that is pricing out our existing population, limiting our ability to attract new residents and professionals to the region and creating, an even, and creating even more downward market pressure on our most economically distressed populations. When asked, most Berkshire employers will tell you that the biggest threat to their business is the workforce. Everyone is hiring and they have been for over three years, all sectors, all industries. But when you delve deeper into that observation, the challenges around finding affordable, quality housing are often the root cause of the workforce shortage and our inability to connect quality people to available jobs. These two major policy initiatives from the Healy Driscoll administration represent new opportunities and will provide key resources to rehab existing housing stock, increase our quality, affordable housing inventory, and also potentially move more market rate developments forward through the increased cap to the HDIP program Though we would love to see a program similar to that made available for other municipalities throughout the Commonwealth and the Berkshires that face similar housing challenges. <laughs> no pressure. <Just. laughs> we're encouraged by the new tools established in this housing bond bill. Specifically, we're optimistic that the soon to be created Commission on, Lo on Unlocking Housing Production will identify additional barriers to development that have plagued the Berkshires and rural regions for decades, such as the 30% threshold or 523 CMR3, which has unintentionally created both regional and socioeconomic inequity in housing development. Our work in the region and advocacy for the region must continue. The Berkshires simply cannot reach its economic potential if we're not providing everyone with the opportunity to live affordably and comfortably in this place that we all love. Again, thank you to the Healy Driscoll administration and, the House, and Housing Secretary Augustus for helping us to begin to get ahead of this crisis. This is truly a generational challenge for the Berkshires and the Commonwealth, and today's announcements are an exciting step in the right direction. Thank you for letting us be a part of this, this moment. And with that, it's my, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Eileen Peltier, the President and CEO of Berkshire Housing. Thanks, Jonathan. Good afternoon, everyone. So as Jonathan said, my name is Eileen Peltier, and I am the President of Berkshire Housing the regional nonprofit housing developer and services provider in the Berkshires. Governor Healy, Secretary Augustus, welcome to Pittsfield and thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. I'm honored to be here with so many colleagues and neighbors, all of whom are deeply committed to ensuring Pittsfield and the Berkshires are a place where everyone has the opportunity to thrive and a place to call home. Unfortunately, with the tough economic times of today and so few homes available, too many of our neighbors here and across the Commonwealth are struggling to maintain basic needs like food and shelter. As a housing provider, I know all too well that too many deserving families are waiting for their name to come up to the top of the list for an apartment 
or waiting for a voucher. Those fortunate enough to receive a voucher are faced with an effectively 0% vacancy rate. Last night, I found five vacant apartments listed across the Berkshires. I also know that Berkshire Housing has provided more than two million in emergency rental assistance in the past 12 months to families that are making choices between food and shelters. These are tough times, but today I am hopeful. I am hopeful because the tax bill of 2023, the first tax cut in 20 years in Massachusetts, will help many both live affordably and in a place they are proud to call home. We stand today before a wonderful example of the impact of the HDIP program, also my home. With the significant increase in funding for HDIP, we can look forward to more projects like this right here in Pittsfield. As an affordable housing developer, a critical tool in the development toolbox is the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program. The increase in the state LIHTC program will expand funding for projects across the state and right here in the Berkshires. More projects like the beautiful rice silk mill just down the road and home to 45 families are on their way. Two projects soon to be under construction in Pittsfield, White Terrace Apartments and West Housatonic Apartments are beneficiaries of this low income housing tax credit program, as is the Eagle Mill Project in Lee. I'm confident that with the increased funding, there'll be more in our future. It feels good to be hopeful. By making more hard-earned dollars available for basic needs and enhancing the development of housing, this tax bill strengthens families and communities across the Commonwealth. Another exciting reason for hope came this morning with the governor's announcement of a housing bond bill, the Affordable Homes Act. This unprecedented comprehensive proposal comes from the administration listening to community and housing leaders identify challenges and opportunities we face each day as we try to ensure all in the Commonwealth have homes. Governor Healy's proposal, when enacted, will bring new and, ex bring new and expand existing critical tools, funding, and policies. Here in the Berkshires, we are facing not only a dearth of available housing, but we are seeing aging public housing portfolio, aging housing stock in general, the loss of naturally occurring affordable housing. Yes, we need to develop new housing, but we must also preserve the quality and the affordability of the housing we do have here in the Berkshires. The proposals in the housing bond bill are just what is needed. As I listened to the governor this morning announce the $4 billion Affordable Homes Act, I was first hopeful, and as the list was unveiled, including investments in new production, millions for preservation of existing units, tools for affordable housing, home ownership development, green building funding, ADU zoning, and office of fair housing, on and on it went. I moved from hopeful to, an ex to inspired and excited. And to be honest, I really needed that. <laughs> With the tools made available through the tax bill and the housing bond bill, we have lots of work to do. Berkshire Housing, together with our community leaders and private and nonprofit developers, is committed to maximizing the opportunity before us. We are hopeful and ready to get to work. Thank you, Governor Healy and Secretary Augustus, for your commitment to creating homes and helping our neighbors live affordably. Governor, the, this morning you said we need to meet the moment. You have, and Berkshire stands with you. Thank you so much. Oh, well, well um, many thanks to, to all who spoke. Um, it's great to be here. I think we're happy to take questions. I also want to acknowledge Lamar Cook, who is our Deputy Director of Western Mass. I didn't see you earlier, but thank you for being here. Great. Happy to take any questions on top. Uh, 
uh, no, I appreciate the question. Um, and Secretary Augustus, you come forward. Um, you know, I, I'd say a couple things. One, it's pretty basic. I mean, no matter where you go, we have got to build more housing, whether it's new starts, new construction, or whether it's preservation and renovation. We just need a ton more housing in the state. And so part of it is, what are the incentives to make that happen in a time of, of high inflation? And things are tough. It's really important that as a state, we have policies that will incent and support that kind of development. The other thing we need to do is look at the way we have been doing things, because clearly the way we have been doing certain things may not be the most effective way to produce housing. And so that's why we thought it was really important to have an executive order that I sign that says the mission is to unlock housing production, and that includes streamlining processes and removing barriers that impede the effective, efficient production of housing in the state. Secretary? Uh it's hard to say it better than the governor did, but it really is the opportunity to bring stakeholders together, uh, folks from local government. Not every local community is as enthusiastic about housing as Pittsfield is. And sometimes our local governments put up barriers to housing production. And we need to figure out what those barriers are, where they are, and how to work together with our local governments, with other stakeholders, and remove those barriers so that we can more uh, expeditiously uh, produce housing. And sometimes the state, we can be very focused on our individual missions and doing good work, important work, but sometimes that can conflict with other priorities like housing production. And we need to raise those up, we need to identify those, and then we need to figure out ways to get them out of the way of housing production. And this commission is going to allow us to get the stakeholders together around the table and identify those and then figure out how to remove them. Sorry, she's for, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and again, I invite Secretary Augustus up. One of the things that I think is really important about this Affordable Homes Act, this $4 billion bond bill, is that we are doing something that we haven't done before, and that is do a lot more to cover some particularly vulnerable populations, including those who are experiencing homelessness, housing insecurity, people with disabilities, building out more accessible units, and also providing for our veterans. And that's something that is also unique to the bond bill. I would say in the 18 different funds uh, that are capitalized through the, the bond authorizations, there are two particular programs that uh, expressly support uh, folks who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, one is to support SROs and other uh, unique housing situations. Sometimes they're converting hotels uh, into shelter space because uh, they lay out very efficiently. And we want to provide additional dollars to organizations that do that important work. And secondly, this is unique. Uh, we have an authorization for what we're calling uh, supportive housing. So often the supportive services that are necessary for folks who are experiencing homelessness or substance abuse disorders or other uh, issues that may be creating their homeless or housing insecure situations not only need the housing but they need the supportive services to keep them rehoused. Uh, we typically support the individuals and the, the funding follows them. We're going to try a different strategy with this new program that's going to support the units. So even as people come and go using those units, those units not only will always be online, but they'll always have the supportive services necessary to keep the next person permanently rehoused. So those are two particular tools. That's great. I mean, this, we're, it's a race against time. I mean, I, um, I need everybody's help in, in terms of advocacy. And, you know, we've had a lot of good conversations. I think that our colleagues in the legislature understand the priority of this issue. Um, and certainly our local uh, officials do as well, and anybody who's operated in the housing space. But, 
you know, it's really important. As I say, we've got spring coming. We've got to get through a winter first. But we've got spring coming and construction starts that are either going to happen or not happen. And that's why time is of the essence. We've got to get this down and, and get it done. And we've got to work together in making that happen. You have one more? All of the above, and uh, as much as we can, as quickly as we can. Ed? Yeah, uh, exactly. In a number of cases, we would be building uh, from the ground up. Uh, in a number of cases, as, as Pittsfield has done very successfully, there are often a lot of underutilized commercial and retail space, particularly in the core downtown areas where you want density, you want people living there, so that then, then they're supporting the restaurants and the shops beneath the walkability, the safety that that creates with vibrant, uh, active streetscapes. So often there's underutilized office space and other space above those retail. We think those are good opportunities to convert to housing because it gets it in the right place, saves historic buildings like St. Mary's, and you know brings on much needed housing. Uh, and it's often greener because we're reusing a lot of the elements in those buildings. So uh, it's a mixture of both. Yeah. And I mean, that's what, look, um, we are in a particularly beautiful part of the state. There are beautiful uh, cities and towns all over this state. One of the things I'm struck by when I come to Pittsfield and I'd say the Berkshires generally is the number of beautiful but old buildings. And, you know, it's an interesting if you look back through history, uh, Pittsfield's gone through an interesting evolution in history. Um, other parts of the state have as well. And, you know, that means that we have certain infrastructure and certain buildings that had a particular purpose at one time that it's really important to repurpose right now. And there's no more important purpose right now than housing. And I'm always struck when I drive through here at the beautiful bones of so many buildings that need a little TLC, that need some, in some instances, serious investment, which, you know, we've got to work together, state, federal, and private dollars to incent. But that's what is so cool and that's what's so possible right now with what we're trying to do. So, yeah, it's about new, new construction and it's also about taking existing infrastructure and buildings, whether they're mills or once once uh, were factories um, or housing and just making it into housing stock to provide for residents to ensure that everybody in this state has access to livable housing you know and that's how we build great communities thank you all for coming out